intel team members are being held captive by the PF in that area, the CFA. Your job is to rescue them. They don't have long to live. It appears that one of our two men has broken out of the encampment and is on the run. He contacted us to say he was surrounded. That's the last we heard from him. Your map is marked with a predicted field of movement based on where his transmissions cut off. The other man is still captive inside the encampment. Boss, rescue our men. Extract them both and get them back to Mother Base. Jackal. Jackals are closely related to dogs and wolves, so much so that they can interbreed with them. In fact, the Soviets are trying to create new species by crossing them with other animals.
up some movement. The squad is on its way to Gazeba camp. We've ID'd them as some CFA heavyweights. These aren't your everyday reinforcements. Whatever's about to happen. That's him. That's the target. He's injured. Looks half starved, too. There's no way he can stand the shock of a Fulton extraction. Get him out by chopper. They kept saying the disease was her fault. Just shouting it at me. Roger. Kept saying, do you think we're angry? The poor bastards from the village were. We'll bleed you all dry for this. the job offers we received concerns me. There's a PF commander who's been talking big about getting into the nuclear arms trade. This could be connected to that yellow cake. And there's another contract I'd like you to handle. It's a wet job, but we need to divert Cypher's attention. Check the mission list for the details. finished analyzing that yellow cake cipher was moving there was nothing unusual about the composition of the yellow cake itself 
most of it was oxidized uranium, with the rest being impurities, various metals as well as traces of organic matter. What's interesting is the composition of these impurities. When we checked them against the impurities found in the copper ore, it was clear the yellow cake didn't come from Shinkalobwe, meaning they went to the trouble of mining two sources of uranium, then transported them together in different states. Another thing, we detected a very thin layer of highly enriched uranium in the middle of the yellow cake. Now that is very interesting. It may not be a lot, but it points to the existence of uranium enriching technology. After all, yellow cake can't naturally produce highly enriched uranium. If they could mass produce this, they'd be just one step away from a gun barrel type nuclear bomb. But uranium enrichment requires advanced technology and a large scale facility. If that kind of place existed in Zaire, the Soviet Union wouldn't sit idly by. And there's another question. Where were they transporting the yellow cake and malachite uranium? The first place that comes to mind is South Africa. The government was supposed to have abandoned nuclear weapons development after caving to international pressure. But rumors persist that it's continued in secret. Plus, CRS were escorting the truck, and they're based out of South Africa. And then South Africa does have an abandoned test site. If Cypher's involved with nuclear development in South Africa, but how would that fit with their weapon to surpass Metal Gear? We need more information. Shinkalobwe. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. The U.S. bought a lot of uranium from Shinkalobwe mine during World War II for the Manhattan Project. They even sent a squad from the Army Corps of Engineers to reopen the mine after it was flooded. That's how good its uranium must have been. With that, the world's first nuclear test was a success. Shikolobwe uranium might have been used in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, too. Just hearing its name is like seeing all the phantoms of the war rise up to haunt us. But all the uranium's dried up, and the mine's been closed for years. So someone reopened it? Right. Zero-risk security seized control of the area and were forcing locals to work in it. And the Zairean government was getting a slice of what they took in exchange for looking the other way. Mobutu has to finance his tastes somehow. He'll gladly sell the rights to some old mine. The question is, why would Zero Risk Security do this kind of thing? Or rather, why were their employers, Cypher, interested in an abandoned mine? Maybe getting trace amounts of uranium into the naked eye it appears to be ordinary malachite, meaning security would be lax. Not a very efficient way of obtaining it, but easier to move. But how would they enrich it at its destination? Did the yellow cake really have a layer of highly enriched uranium in it? Having trouble believing it? No. If they say it's real, then it's real. In which case, they might have some enrichment method that we don't know about. And this was to test it out? It's possible. And that would mean it's almost complete. Coyote operates mainly out of Africa these days. Of the three PFs, they're the smallest. However, they scooped up most of the Rhodesian SAS after the country collapsed four years ago. Picture their entire organization as one big special forces unit. With Rhodesia a British colony, the Rhodesian SAS had its origins in 22 SAS C Squadron. They started out as a group known as the Southern Rhodesia Volunteers. But at 51, they were incorporated into 22 SAS as members of the British Commonwealth and deployed to fight guerrillas in the Malayan emergency. Even now, 22 SAS keeps the C Squadron designation empty in recognition of their service. In a way, you could say the SAS almost makes up the core of Rogue Coyote. Later on, they were bolstered by other talent, including former Sela Scouts and 32 Battalion. These guys are direct descendants of the best special forces in the world. They won't go down without a fight. Don't get careless. Kunganga Mine. A civil war has been going on in that region for the last 20 years. It's being fought by what are now two ethnic groups, the Buta and the Mbele. Originally, you could barely tell them apart, but the reason for the current armed conflict goes back to World War I. After the war, their land was colonized by a European power, and it decided to give local control to the Buta. That split the two groups into rulers and subjects, laying the foundations for an inevitable civil war. 
The friction between them remained even after they won independence from Europe. The Buta are holding on to power to this day, and the Mbele rebels continue to fight back. The conflict is funded by locally mined gold, rare metals, diamonds. They've used the money from those to arm themselves, buy oil and even hire PFs. The Buta administration owns the mining rights to Kungenga Mine. But most of the laborers are Mbele, who they've taken prisoner. The product they've gouged out of their land is bought up by cheap Western corporations. And the civil war is fueled by the profits. That's how it goes. One country's people is split apart by another country. Then the two groups tear up their own land for money in order to fight each other. Now this civil war started by a foreign power is the norm. And it's sucking up all the country's resources. PFs are just the same. They follow the money, taking war with them wherever they go. That goes for us too. It's an endless river of bloody retaliation. And we're standing downstream. Should we make a stand and staunch the flow? Or wade in amongst the corpses and make a bigger splash than the rest? We'll follow your lead, boss. Six targets. Our contract is to kill them all. And the client is the general they served under. He wants them dead to keep them from talking. Check a VI on your iDroid for more information. Mercenaries belonging to Rogue Coyote. Not so much a corporation as a mixed bag of hired guns working together under a single banner. That's an enemy gunship. A single burst from its machine gun could cut a man in half. Tread carefully, boss.
coming too. Roger that. Good dog. to identify them.
target. He's coming too. Roger that. Stay okay.
object on board. Leave the rest to us.